Hello, uh, welcome to this uh, video. Today I'll begin a series of uh, lectures on uh, hidden Markov uh, models. Uh, today's video will be an introduction. Uh, I will introduce uh, discrete uh, Markov processes and hidden Markov models. Uh, I will speak about uh, how we can build and uh, train the models and how we can use the models to answer different types of uh, questions. <coughs> Uh, Prince, uh, hidden Markov models, by the way, belong to uh, one of the most uh, widely used uh, models in probabilistic-based artificial intelligence. Uh, this is particularly the case uh, for voice uh, recognitions. And we will discuss, uh, or I will speak uh, something about voice recognitions in the course of uh, this uh, lecture. Uh, suppose we are given uh, this uh, audio clip and we want to fit this audio clip uh, to the computer so that it can discriminate between two spoken words. We want to know whether this audio clip uh, represents the word inconclusive or irreversible and uh, the two words for example have the following uh, signal uh, footprints and we wish to know to which of these words the one above corresponds to <clears throat> because people speak uh, these words differently because of their uh, anatomy uh, uh, pronunciation uh, ethnical background, uh, whether they are male or female, uh, we may not be able to 100% uh, duplicate uh, this uh, footprints. So we have to take a probabilistic approach to arrive uh, at a conclusion, which is why we use hidden Markov uh, models. One of the approach to build a model uh, would be to uh, segment the time series into different uh, uh, units, each having the same uh, duration. In each, uh, and each fragment, we wish to map into one of the discrete states. And we want to see for different types of words, uh, how the state transit over time. We suspect that there is an underlying pattern for uh, transiting uh, into different states and this is what we wish to uh, model in a probabilistic sense and later on when a, a spoken word is given to us we see how the, the different uh, building blocks uh, change over time and then compute the likelihood probability and then choose uh, one of the models among competitive uh, models. We'll discuss this in the second part of our uh, lecture. <coughs> Let's, from now on, so I'm going to focus on building a model for a given system. For now, let's just consider the weather. Suppose each day, say at noon, we take measurements concerning the weather. And this measurement may correspond to the temperature of the, the, the area, the relative humidity, the barometric air pressure, or light intensity. All of them may tell us something about the weather. And the, the measurement we take, there are analog signals, but we want to map them into one of the following states. So we may say uh, the measurements uh, represent rainy or cloudy or sunny weather in one of these discrete states. <clears throat> so this is the first uh, step to begin modeling a system. We convert analog signal into discrete states. 
Secondly, for long period of time, for example, this uh, measurement refers to the city of Oxford. For a long period of time, we take measurement. Each time at noon, we take measurement and map this analog signal into digital signal and examine whether there is some underlying pattern in the way the weather changes. For example, if we just consider uh, this uh, series or, or sequence of observations, we see that rain comes three times, cloudy comes six times, and sunny comes four times. So from this observation alone, we can now calculate the probability of experiencing these discrete states. We assume that we have taken sufficient statistics or sufficient measurement so that the measurement we have represents the weather in Oxford. So because this is the initial statistics we have from which we can begin our models, we call them initial probability and represent this initial probability with the symbol pi each time with the index referring to that to a corresponding state. So pi s means the initial state of being in the sunny uh, weather and pi c uh, in a cloudy weather, in a cloudy state, and pi r in a rainy state. <coughs> now the second uh, logical step we have to follow will be whether there is some some, some statistical dependency between present and past states. In a discrete Markov process, we are always interested only in the past state. We don't care how the system arrives in that state. We just begin from the past state and study the relationship between the present state and the past state. So if, for example, we study the, 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 the transition here twice, we can see that the cloudy state uh, uh, gave, gave way to rainy state here, one and two. Likewise, the rainy state gave uh, or transits into sunny state and into sunny state here. But the cloudy state also transits not only to rainy state, but to a sunny state, albeit with different probability. Now, because we have assumed that we have taken measurement which is long enough to represent the weather of Oxford, from just looking at the way the state transits, we can calculate transition probability for each state. So what we do, and represent this transition by AIJ, AIJ means the transition from state I to state J or in a probabilistic term, the probability that the system is in state J at time T, given that it was in, a sta in a state I at time T minus one. And for each state, we have now three discrete states, remember, rainy, cloudy, and sunny. So for each of them, we just study from the sequence of observations we have made, how they transit. For example, a sunny state may remain sunny with a probability of this much, or transit to rainy and uh, or cloudy with the corresponding transition probabilities. Likewise, the rainy state may transit, uh, may stay in the rainy state or transit to the other state with different probabilities. So by now combining the, these three uh, uh, possibilities, we have an n by n uh, matrix, n being the number of discrete states uh, into which we uh, map the analog measurements we take using some sensors. Now this model gives us a complete information how the weather evolves over time in the city of 
Oxford. And this model applies only for Oxford. If we wish to reason about the weather in Addis Ababa or in London or in Cambridge or uh, New York, we have to do observation for that particular uh, city and develop transition probabilities for them too. So the discrete Markov process now can be described completely by the transition metrics and the initial probability for each discrete state. The initial probability, remember, refers to the probability of experiencing that particular state in a mean square sense or in, in, on average. Once we have these two parameters, now we are in a position to answer different type of questions pertaining to the weather in Oxford. For example, we may be asked the following question. What is the probability of experiencing this sequence of uh, states in, in Oxford? Especially we are interested that the weekend is, uh, will be sunny in Oxford, which is very uh, less likely. So, because now we have both the initial probability and the uh, transition probability, we can answer this question as follows. So the first one is cloudy. So we take the initial probability of cloud, cloudy, pi c. Then the, there is a transition from cloud to cloud, from cloud to rain, from rain to cloud, from cloud to cloud, from cloud to sun, and from sun to sun. So these are the transition probabilities and by multiplying all of them, the reason we multiply is that we are dealing here with a sequence of observations that we observe in this sequence. So this is uh, the answer we get. Another more interesting uh, question we can answer will be, what is the probability of experiencing D number of sunny days in Oxford. For example, we wish to make a holiday and we want to know the, the probability of experiencing D number of uh, 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 sunny days in succession. That means for D number of days, it stays in the same state, but on D plus one, it changes state, but we don't care into what state it changes. It could change into cloud, cloudy, or it could change into Rain. So for this one, we have the initial probability pi s. Now for d minus one, we have the, the transition probability ASS repeating itself d minus one times, and then changing into one of the other states with a probability of one minus a s s. So this is how we can describe. Now we can describe this in short form as PS of D. PS of D simply means the probability of experiencing sunny states for D number of days. <clears throat> Once we have this, we can even answer another more important uh, question, which is what, are, what is the number, the expected number of sunny days in Oxford? If we go any time to Oxford, what is the expected number of sunny days we can enjoy? This, because we are now dealing with expected value, we can calculate D times the probability of D. Remember, PSD refers to the number of sunny days, the, the number of D number of sunny days. <clears throat> So this is how we answer. Now we can substitute PS of D with, uh, uh, with, uh, with this term. Here, remember, D runs from zero to infinity. We may no, never experience any uh, sunshine in, in Oxford, or we may uh, experience infinite number of days if we are lucky, but with different probabilities. Because the variable here is D, we can take pi s and one minus a s out of the summation and then uh, deal with the remaining. However, here you see d times a s is the power of d minus one looks like a derivation uh, of some sort. 
if we have x to the power of n, and if we derivate this with respect to x, what we get is n times x is the power of n minus one. So now we can substitute this with a derivation expression like this d by d ASS. ASS is the, the variable of interest for the derivation I made. Because now derivation is a linear operation, we can take it outside of the summation, and then we have now this expression. Remember, ASS is a transition probability, and this transition probability is between zero and one. So if you have a, a, a variable between zero and one and uh, exponent it with d, and d runs from zero to infinity, we have a geometric series. And for this expression, the, the outcome of the geometric series is one over one minus a s s. And if we derivate uh, one over one minus a s s with respect to a s s, what we get is one over one minus a s s squared. But from the above expression, we have to bring these two terms, and this term eliminates one of the one minus a s s terms. So what we get is pi s over one minus a s s. So now given the model for Oxford, we can even calculate the average number of days, we, uh, the average number of sunny days we can experience in Oxford. We can do the same thing for cloudy and also rainy. So far, we've been dealing with discrete Markov processes, assuming that the states can be directly determined, assuming that we can take measurements, map them into discrete states, and then begin our analysis from there. But there are certain conditions in which we may not be able to observe the states directly. Instead, we have to begin with indirect evidence, in which case we have to deal with a double uh, uh, or a two-stage uh, stochastic uh, process. And this is where hidden Markov models come into uh, question. <clears throat> so to begin with, imagine Alice lives in Oxford, and we don't. We cannot observe the, the, the weather in Oxford. We cannot look it up in the internet for some reason. But every day, Alice takes either her car to office or she cycles. And her taking the car or the uh, bicycle depends on the weather, and we have this knowledge. And the, the model of the weather, we also have. And remember, each of these, whether she drives or cycles, depending on the weather, but she may nonetheless drive in each of these states with different probabilities. Likewise, she may cycle even when it is rainy or cloudy or sun, sunny. So we have these possibilities. Of course, with different probabilities. For example, the probability of taking the, the bicycle when it's sunny is higher than the probability of uh, cycling when it's rainy. Likewise, the probability of driving when it's rainy is higher than the probability of driving when it's sunny. But we assume that we have these probabilities. <coughs> because we can observe, or somebody can observe Alice long enough to determine her habit. Now the question is that, uh, as I said, we have a two-stage stochastic process, one relating to the way the, the weather changes in Oxford, and this is described by A, and we assume that we have this model, and the other refers to Alice's habit, uh, driving habits, depending on the, the weather. And we also assume that we have this model. Both of them, remember, can be uh, determined by experiment. 
Now, suppose on her Instagram account, Alice updates how she drives to her office by posting one of these images. Every day at noon, we get a post on Alice's account in the form of these observations. And we want to determine whether this observation belong to Oxford or Addis Ababa, or what, high, what the weather was when she drives, sorry, when she uh, takes one of these means to come to her office. So remember, on each day, the weather could be in one of these states, but we don't see the weather. All we have is just this and the, the, the model parameters. So the question is, is it possible to reason about the weather in Oxford, given this sequence of observations and the model parameters? The answer is, of course, yes, it is uh, possible. And for that, we have to uh, be take into account or we have to uh, take advantage of the model parameters we, we have. For example, we may wish to know the probability that Alice cycles on the first date, given she is in Oxford. As I said, since we don't know about the weather, it could be the case that she cycled when it was raining, she cycled when it was cloudy, or she cycled when it was uh, sunshine. And we have to add all these possibilities to determine the likelihood of observing this on the first date. The probability that these two happen at the same time is uh, the probability of Alice cycling, given that it is sunshine, so this is how we express it. Uh, pi s is the initial probability being sunny, and b s of y here refers to the probability of Alice cycling when the weather was sunny. And for these two things to happen, cycling and cloudy, first it has to be in the state of cloudy with pi c. And then we observe this when the weather was cloudy. That means b, c, y. b here, remember, to the observation. c remember, uh, refers to the state. And y, the observation being cycling. So we have to add all of them to determine the, the probability of observing this symbol or the probability that Alice cycles hall, uh, to office on the first day on Monday, given the model for Oxford. And suppose we just depict this by alpha one. R, alpha one R simply means on the first date being the, the state being R. On the first date, observing this symbol instead of R. Alpha 1c on the first date being in state C and observing this symbol. Alpha 1s on the first date observing this symbol being in state S. So when we add all of them, we can determine the probability of alicycling in Oxford on Monday. Of course, now we can also ask another interesting question. Given the observations we have, what is the probability that it was sunny on Tuesday? Remember, in hidden Markov models, because we don't directly observe the states, we have to always begin with the observations. And we have to take all the observations into account. Why? Because we have already assumed when we build our model that the states are statistically dependent. The states don't simply happen, but they are 
results of the previous states, which is why we have to take of all observations we have into account because of the implicit assumption we've made regarding the dependency between the hidden states. So if we are asked to compute the probability that on Tuesday it was sunny, we have to take all those observations into account. And we can describe this like this. Alpha two, alpha two means we are not interested on a time two or observing two symbols. And at the same time, or at time t two, we are in state S. This now we can calculate by taking our previous knowledge into account. Remember, on day, uh, on day one or T1, the weather in Oxford could be in any of this and transited into sunny state with different transition probabilities. And we could have observed Alice in any of these states. So we have to take all the three state states into account. So for the first case, we have this transition. For the second, we have this in the third. So in all of this, we could have observed these symbols and on Tuesday being sunny. Now the, the, the probability of observing these two states in a row is calculated pi r times a r s because now we are transiting from a rainy state to sunny state. This one can be calculated as pi c, the initial probability being in cloud is pi c. And transiting from cloud to state, uh, uh, sunny is a c s. Likewise for s, we have this one. Now the probability of observing these two symbols, we have also to take into account these two symbols in this state, in this state, and in this state can be described like this. Now by combining this, we have to multiply all of them, add to, to determine the probability of observing these two symbols and on, sun, or on Tuesday it was sunny. But remember, this we have already determined in our previous state. The, the probability of observing this symbol in this state is described as pi r, pi r being the, uh, in the, on the first day, the state being rainy, and b uh, r y, meaning the probability of observing cycling in the rainy state. This we have already called alpha one R. So we have to, instead of computing everything all over again, we can describe these probabilities as a combination of the past alpha one R being for this uh, blue uh, variables, and then transiting from this state to this state by alpha R S, and then when we are here, we observe this symbol Bs of t. This is for this state, for this state alpha 1c, for this state alpha 1s, and then we can add another probabilities to determine the probability of experiencing sunshine on Tuesday, given these symbols. You'll appreciate the meaning of this uh, later on because it simplifies the calculation of likelihood uh, probabilities. In summary, a hidden Markov model now is described by n discrete states. In each of states, we may experience m different symbols of or observations, we may not observe some of them for, for which we have a probability of zero, but a maximum of M observation can be uh, made in each of the states. 
another important aspect is that the states are not independent from one another, but there is a statistical dependency. That means we describe these statistical dependencies using transition, a transition matrix. A transition matrix contains element AIJ, meaning the transition, the probability of transiting into state J at time T, given that at time T minus one, the system was in state I. This we have to do for uh, uh, I running from one up to N, J running from one up to N. In each state we observe, and the probability of observing each symbol is described by BJK. That means the probability of observing the symbol K being in uh, state J. Uh, we have M symbols and we have N uh, uh, states altogether we have to take into account. And in the beginning, because in the beginning there will be no transition, we have to uh, deal with initial probability. These initial probabilities for each state, we have N initial uh, probabilities. In a more compact way, a hidden Markov model is described by lambda, and lambda contains the transition matrix, the um, observation probability distribution, and the initial probability. This is for one model, for example, for Oxford. If we are dealing about the weather in Addis Ababa, then we have to have another, another model for New York as well as for London independently. Later on, we will see how we try to map observation sequence, uh, an observation sequence into one of these competitive models. Once we have the model, uh, we can use a hidden Markov model to address three principal problems. The first one is given competitive models and a sequence of observations, we wish to determine the best model which likely produced the sequence of observations. So this is the first assignment we can solve using hidden Markov models. The second assignment is as I told you, we cannot access the states in hidden Markov models. The, the states are hidden from us. And if we want to uncover the states, what was the weather, for example, in Oxford when Alice posted those uh, sequence of observations, then here we have to use again hidden Markov models to uncover the, the states. The third most, uh, the third uh, principal uh, problem we need to address is how to update the model parameters, so the, the transition matrix, observation uh, uh, probability, and even the initial probabilities. The weather in Oxford does not stay stagnant throughout the year. It, it changes because uh, there is climate change, for example, or other factors affecting the weather. So if we get fresh measurements, is it possible to automatically update or adjust the, the model parameters? The answer is yes, and we can still use hidden Markov models and observations in conjunction to address these issues. In my next video, I'm going to deal with the first principal problem, and in the subsequent videos, I will address the other principal problems. Thank you for your interest in hidden Markov model. Uh, we'll see each other hopefully in my next uh, video. Until then, goodbye from me.